the definition of high concept, sometimes I struggle with it myself mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. I, I hear it and I go, okay, and then yeah. I forget. So. Well, generally, it's, it's considered uh, an idea that you can, that, that's um, is very easily understandable in, a, in a, a sentence, a couple of sentences. You know, if you're pitching something, pitch a high, pitch a high concept. Three secretaries conspired to murder their boss, nine to five. Uh, you know, an actor dresses as a woman to get, to get a job on a soap opera because he can't get any other work and learns to be, learns to appreciate women more as a result of it, Tootsie. I mean, that kind of thing. You know, something that, that has a high, now, the, again, those movies are quite a little less, a little less popular now, those high concept comedies or those high concept ideas, but you still need a concept that is strong and simple to, to, to understand and for people to get, you know, what, how will they market it? You know, what'll be on the poster? What'll be in the trailer? Pe for just people to get it, you know, and it, it doesn't have to be anything that, that wild or that imaginative, but it just has to be relatively simple to state. Um, otherwise, sometimes ideas get so complicated that they get very convoluted, and that shows up in the, in the writing and sometimes the film itself. So it's about keeping it simple, but interesting, and, and, and uh, I don't know, for lack of a better word, clever and, and unique. Yeah. So can someone sort of bounce that idea off someone that like, hey, you know, this is sort of the log line for my script or whatever, and, and if, if the person just doesn't get it, then they know I need to refine it. Right, right, exactly. Okay. I, mean, I, I mean, I've definitely gone in to pitch ideas, you know, whether it's for a film or a TV pilot or something, and, uh, you know, I, I, th I think I get it, and I think it's a good idea, and then somebody will say, well, I like the idea, it's a little compli it's going to get a little complicated, though, because, because of A, B, and C. Um, and and I, to me, it's like, oh, well, yeah, I get it. You know, I know, I know what the idea, I can totally see how this idea can work. But if I were to write that idea myself, and sometimes I'll go back and try to outline it a little bit just to see, to test it, and I'll realize, yeah, it is, kind, it is a little complicated. It sounds high concept. It sounds simple and fun, and you can see what the movie is. You know, you can see the whole movie. It's like a, like a, a carpet that rolls out in front of you. You can just see the whole thing, what it is. But sometimes it's not, you know, sometimes it is more complicated than you think. So there has to be kind of a, 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 a you know, sometimes people say, God, I wish I thought of that idea. You know, something's just as simple, beautiful in its simplicity, you know, and yet, again, three secretaries conspired to murder their boss, you know, a comedy. I mean, it's just something that's just simple and people relate to and people get. Um, I mean, you know, I, I've written a lot of high concept comedies and it's just kind of a hard to explain. It's like sure. one of those things, you know it when you hear it. Right, um, right. But, uh, um, but like, you know, my movie Manhattan Transfer, you know, I, I gave you the log lines, the high concept. Radio Shrink t starts to take on the neuroses of all of his callers on this, the most important week of his life. You know, mm -hmm. you see what the movie's about. It's a high concept. Um, but it, it, they're, they're hard to come by. <laughs> Nowadays, they, they, they don't make quite as many of those as films. They don't make quite as many of those high concept movies. Often were comedies. Sometimes they were, you know, Die Hard was high concept. You know, uh, Lethal Weapon was a high concept. You know, just, just, uh, just you know, uh, uh, you could express the idea of the movie in, in you know, a, a sentence or two and you totally got it. You know, that's kind of what it is. Um, you may see more of that on television now. You know, I don't know. Uh, you know, if I was, if I, anytime I would, I'm going in to pitch something, you know, I'm trying to go and you go, try to go in and pitch something that's that's relatively clear and simple to understand uh, in terms of what the world is going to be, what where the entertainment value is going to come from, where the conflict can be, and a lot of that is just inherent in those couple of sentences. Um, and uh, and sometimes it makes a good film or TV series. Sometimes it doesn't. You know, it's not everything. But if you've got a good character attached to it, you know, chances are you have a good shot of of at least having a good piece of material from it. So if it's too wordy, right. it, it needs right. to be reduced. Yeah, yeah. and you know, like anything, that if you, when you start explaining anything to somebody, you know, uh, and, when, if, and if people who are not sort of natural pitchers of stories um, or don't do it for a living or whatever, you know, somebody's like, somebody will come to me and they'll say, I just had the most amazing experience. You've got to write a movie about this. I said, what is it? And they'll say, well, okay, I was standing on a street corner and before you know it, they're talking for 20 minutes about this story. You're lost, you, you got lost at minute four and there's, there's no story to it, or you think there's something funny, but it's just too complicated. What's the movie? What's the story? You know, wh why am I gonna laugh? What do I do with that? You know, there's a lot of that. So yeah, you have to keep it, you have to keep it simple you know, and unique.